This is going to be a real short bonus video on low resolution graphics. I realize they're actually pretty simple and won't take up very much time, so let's just get it out of the way in this little segment and we'll be able to use it more in future videos. The first thing you need to do to use graphics is type GR, which will put the Apple II into low res graphics mode. The next thing you need to do if you want to draw on the screen is set the color you want to draw with. There are 16 colors numbered one through numbered 0 through 15, excuse me. 0 is black and 15 is white and you choose what color you want by setting color equal to the color you'd like to draw with. So we'll choose white. Um, and let's draw just a dot on the screen and you do that with the plot command and then you give it an x value and a y value. X is 0 to 39 from left to right, and Y is 0 to 39 from top to bottom. So if we wanted to do 10 to the right and 5 down, we do plot 10, 5. If we wanted to do 20 to the right and 15 down, you can do that as well. If you want to clear the screen, you can type GR again. Let's get back into text mode by typing text. And you can type home to clear the garbage on the screen. Let's write a really short program that just prints out all the colors. So do 10 and we'll put it into graphics mode. And then we'll do 4. We'll do x is equal to 0 to 15. Oh, well, maybe we should do 20 for x is equal to 0 to 15. All right, and then we'll do 30, color is equal to X. And then on 40, we'll do plot X, and we'll do it 10 down. And then on 50, we'll do next X. And those are the colors that you have available. All the way on the left, it looks black because black is one of the colors you can choose. So you get 0 to 15 numbered as such. Let's do, you load a program I wrote from the disk earlier. Actually, let's clear it first. These are the colors. Number 5 and number 10 look identical because of a hardware quirk. On some emulators, you can tell them apart. 5 is usually lighter than 10, but on an actual Apple II, it's completely indistinguishable. If you use a monochrome Apple II instead, which I will change, you instead see these different patterns. And again, 5 and 10 are identical on actual hardware. I'll change it back to color for now. So let's get back into text mode. I'll type home to clear this garbage. And let's uh, let's do lines. So we'll type gr to turn graphics mode back on. Pick color equals to 15 to choose white. And there's not a way to plot a line between arbitrary uh, coordinates in low res graphics mode. You can only plot individual points or you can plot horizontal and vertical lines. So let's prompt, uh, plot a vertical line, so a line up and down. You do that with VILN, and you type where you'd like it to start and where you'd like it to end on a specific column. So let's say we want it to start at 5 down and continue to 10 down. And then you use AT, and now you choose what column you would like it on. So we'll choose 10. And it draws a line from 5 to 10 on column number 10. And you can do H line, as you may have guessed. And we'll do, again, we'll do 5 to 10 at 10. And you can draw horizontal lines as well. That's all there is to it for low res graphics. The commands available are pretty simple. So you can get the value of a pixel on the screen by doing SCRN. And this can be handy if you're trying to do, let's actually, let's do GR. And we'll clear the screen. Color equals 15. And let's do plot 1010 to get us a dot. 
And let's say that you are making a game and you want to tell if uh, there's a wall there or if there's a dot there or, you know, what are any, any time you'd want to be able to tell what is actually on the screen without having to do any other kind of magic in the behind the scenes. You can use a CRN and we'll check 10, 9 and that gives us zero. But we can check 10, 10 and that gives us the color of that pixel. So you can use this to uh, tell if a pixel is on at all or not by using just the greater than operator. So you can do print, uh, or actually we can just do if screen 10, 10 is greater than zero, then print hit. And we get hit because there is a pixel at that at those coordinates. So that's a pretty easy way to do collision detection. Um, you can do it a few other ways too. You can keep track of what's on the screen yourself if you want, but you don't exactly have a lot of memory, so it's easiest just to peek at the screen. That's all for this episode. We're going to come back with high-res graphics, arrays, memory blocks, and some other things next episode. Thanks, and I'll see you then.